Good morning. Today is Wednesday, June the 10th. This is a regular meeting of Commissioner's Court of Grimes County, Texas. Uh, we are at 114 West Buffington Avenue. First order on the agenda is to call the meeting to order. I'd ask that you please stand for an invocation. Remain standing for a pledge to the U.S. and then to the Texas flag. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we're grateful for this day and we thank you for the blessings of this life. We ask, Father, that you give us wisdom in the decisions that we make. Father, that you would give us patience in the decisions that we struggle with. Father, we ask that you uh, bring your blessings on all the elected officials, the apart department heads of Grimes County, as we go through this budgetary time, uh, as we go through this time where we're dealing with the, still the uh, remnants of the pandemic. Watch over us and keep us. Father, we ask that you be with each and every citizen of our county, of our state, and our nation. Give them peace, give them patience, and give them understanding in their day-to-day -day works. Father, forgive us when we fall short, and it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Would you be seated, please? We are still, uh, for those that might be watching Facebook Live or those that will watch the recording afterward, we are still limiting attendance within the Commissioner's Court meeting room to a, a number of 10, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to expand sooner than later, but we'll still follow those distancing guidelines for the meantime. With that, we will go to agenda item number two, public comments. We look forward to any comments. Are there any public comments out in the hallway? Did you have any registrations, Vanessa? No, sir, I did not. You did not. Commissioners, are there any, any comments? Yes, Commissioner Walker. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to announce that um, this Saturday, June 13th at 930 uh, at Brulee Field or Brulee Parking Lot in Navasota, they are having a peace march and prayer gathering which will proceed to downtown to the city hall at 9.30, they will have a prayer. So, so that's Brulee, where the? From line up at the Brulee lot okay. and march to downtown yeah. and what there, they should have a prayer. Okay. Okay. It's called a prayer gathering. That's this Saturday at 9.30? At 9.30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else, commissioners or Commissioner Walker? That's it. It's I, I want to thank the fair board for the, uh, fair that we had last week yeah, it was uh, very good that our kids had the opportunity to show their animals and get them sold at the fair this year a lot, a lot of hard work that went into that with the fair yeah. having to rearrange things to, to get it done and the fair board was uh, how do I say it they had a difficult task and they worked through that difficult yeah. task in allowing the fair to uh, be presented and the key items of the fair as you say commissioner the showing of the animals the auctions it went off very well yeah Jason, I, commissioner walker i don't know uh, i just saw james harris this morning there'll also be a walk on next friday is that right uh there is a walk uh on the 19th okay. and it's at the same time 9 30 from the high school to city hall so june 19th and that is a holiday for the county. Yeah, given the circumstances of today, my understanding is that it's open to anybody and everybody, yes. and it's to be about a freedom walk or something. Yes. Of yes, including the city officials, our law enforcement, uh, they're all going to be in attendance. So. When there's some, some upheaval or unrest in different places in the country today, it is nice to know that, or would be nice to know, that we all stand together as residents of Grimes County and I think both of those walks uh, have some aspect of that. Involved. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Any other comments? With that, we move to consent agenda items, and that would be consent agenda item number three and number four. Uh, number three is consider and take action to approve the treasurer's list of claims and bills. Four is consider and take action to approve payroll. 
Are there any questions for those consent agenda items? Give you just another moment. Okay. If there are no questions, then I'd like to make the motion we approve the uh, treasurer's list of claims and bills and the payroll. Second. There's a motion before the court on consent agenda items number three and number four by Commissioner Walker, seconded by Commissioner Dobianski. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? That motion carries. We'll go to now agenda item number five, Grimes County Building Maintenance Manager, Mr. Al Peeler. And the agenda item reads, update on ongoing projects, Grimes County Courthouse, Grimes County Jail, Grimes County Justice Center. Good morning, Mr. Peeler. Good morning, Commissioners, Judge. We'll start out with the courthouse because it's listed that way on the agenda. Um, they're working on the cupola uh, doors uh, north and south will start June 15th. Uh, Premier's asked for a two-week extension because of COVID and some unfore unforeseen circumstances with rotted wood around the gutters and roof and valleys. It took a more time to reconstruct that. They're asking for two weeks. This is, I don't have a problem with that. I can, did my concerns, so I granted the two-week with stipulations. Um, one stipulation was they work a five day work week from here on out. If I'd have known that from the start, I wouldn't have agreed that they work four days a week for the whole duration. I, I'm not, it, it, it goes against my leather to work a four day work, work week when you're under a contract. If you're a GC, you work until the job's done, in my opinion. Granted, not working the weekends. It was an oversight on my uh, point uh, person that they pulled a fast one. They got four week, four days a week for the extension. But this extension says we're going to work five five days a week until this job's done. Okay. Um, the new date for exterior is July sixth. End date. And in that, um, July 6th is the end date. Final punch list will be started that week. Everest and Premier will be with them. The engineer is an architect, and if something's wrong, they fix it then. Um, I, I stated to them that July 6th through the 10th is punch list and take care of everything done. Anything after the 10th, we start charging our per diem per day. Okay. Um, I felt that was reasonable. That's for exterior only. That's not for interior because we're still waiting on tech to get us some numbers back for the exterior, our interior okay. process. So with that being said, the scaffolding will start to come down July 13th unless they want to start paying us. So that, uh, is there any questions about the courthouse? Do you think you'll have an idea of when we'll get an insurance settlement on the interior work? I'm waiting on it now. So, so we've done all we can do. I, everything's in their hands now. Okay. Anything else on the courthouse? I'm um, going to the jail. Next, I spoke with Ty Green on 6-9. We're still under lockdown and with, with the increasing numbers in the jail, it's almost impossible to get anybody in there to finish remediation and then start the control system because of the numbers increasing in the jail and the 14-day quarantine. What we've been able to do is move prisoners out to another cell and then clean. Well, now we're in 14, 14, and then we're scattered everybody out. So until that, until they let us let up on that, 
I don't have any date that that will resume. Okay. Um, is there any is there any issue that what we've already cleaned no. because of this delay will receive contamination from what hasn't been cleaned? No, because they're on different sections. Okay, we've stopped we've stopped the mold itself. We just need to, or rather, killed it, so we need to clean it up and out. Right. Well, we we we've, we've killed the mold and eradicated everything in the front section and part of the jail itself. We haven't eradicated any of the uh, remediate or mold in the back part of the jail. Okay. And that's on a different AC system. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. To be clear, when you talk of cleaning, mm -hmm. you're talking about two different things? Because you said you were talking about lockdown and moving of inmates, I thought, mm -hmm. to clean the areas they were in, or is to this remediate. mold cleaning? It's yeah, so you have remediation and then you have right behind that you have cleaning. Okay. So you, so what we do is we move the prisoners, we re remediate the system, we remediate the uh, jail cell, everything in it, and then we come back and wipe down and clean. That answer your question? Pretty much. Okay. Okay, so you have two processes going on. You have mold remediation yes, going on, and you have uh, di disinfecting it, of the cells. Yes, because it, when you when you mold remediate, um, it, they're not alive, but they're still there. The spores are still stuck on everything. Okay. So we come back and just wipe everything down, in, and that's the clean section. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, moving on to the Justice Center. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I've seen it. I know. I know you have. Oh, I'm here. That's what I meant. So since I've handed that out, we'll go with that. Um, just kind of, we named the building, and then we kind of went through the process of naming the building. So we're going to go through the process of naming the building. So we're going to go through the the building. And I didn't want everybody to think when, hey, could I have one of those? <laughs> <laughs> now we know the extra one. Yeah, now we know who that one was for. I didn't want everybody to think on the main entrance that it would say Grimes County Justice Center and Business Center. Because when I got to looking at the, <laughs> looking at the uh, drawings, there's no way I can do that. Mm -hmm. And where it says Business Center, as you're looking to the right, it used to say Administration. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So if this is... If this is suitable, I'm gonna. I'm going to. I've made decisions about this building mechanically, but there was no way I was gonna make this decision. <laughs> so if this is suitable for you guys, then I'm gonna sign off on this. But if it's not, we'll go back to the drawing board. I do see a question. Okay. When when they enter to go to the business center. They enter here or is there doors over here? No, ma'am, so what you're not seeing, is, it's kind of difficult because of the angle. Mm -hmm. You can walk here mm -hmm. and cut across here mm -hmm. or you can come up here and go underneath there. Okay, I wonder was there additional entry? Yes, okay. you don't have to, so, for, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, so the justice center, when you walk in that side, and that them doors that is the secure side so if you walk to your right and that's just a porch per se mm -hmm. correct Chip? Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Sorry. so you, you don't go in them doors before you get that's a porch there so there are no doors on this exterior yes yes, yes. Right okay. that's that's what I was where 
right here? Yeah, yeah there's a door right there. Okay. That's yes, ma'am. That's the non secure. That's so they the, will know this is business center. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's where I was going. With yes, that. we can, and we could probably still have a, a sign by the driveway or driveways or something and say Grimes County Justice and Business Center, so that would, would you know alleviate any kind of confusion and everything. I just wanted to know that they knew that they could go directly in here if they got business to attend to. Yeah, yeah, and they know over here is Justice. So I just wanted to make sure. So that, if you guys are okay with that, I will sign off on that. If you're not okay with that, then we're going to have to come back to Commissioner's Court and figure out how you want this arranged. Well, I'm okay with it, but the 30 minutes we spent at that one meeting talking about is it going to be A N D and or Aspersine and <laughs> that's a half hour of our, our half hour of our lives we'll yes. never get back. We even had to call in the legal team. I'll put it on. No, I did not say that. Feel free to blame me, as you always do. <laughs> so, why you have this picture? Why you have this picture? That's not. I'm just going to give you a briefing. The Mason Masonic Lodge uh, will be on that front corner, front right. Is that correct? Front right column is where it will be. We had will it. it be on, will it be on the inside of the column or the outside, outside. of the column? Outside. Okay. It, when you walk up, you'll be able to see it. Okay. We had it to the far right. Masonic Lodge didn't want it there. Um, Commissioner Cox got with me. I got with uh, Michael Lloyd. Everybody was in agreement to construct the GC, Collier. They were, they liked it there because it fit in a little better. And it's not in the brick, it's down in the sandstone area. Is that, are you talking about right here, Al? And right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, right. not over here. No, right it here. used to be over here. Okay. And now it's going to go somewhere in this area okay. right here. Thank you. Okay. For those. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know for those that are Facebook Live, if you want to hold this in front of the camera so they could see it for just 10 seconds, a little closer in front of the camera. I guess that's good. Thank you, Al. Is there a consensus this is agreeable to all the commissioners? Uh, I'll sign off on that. Thank you. Uh, pro project modifications I approved were the savings of conduit, conduit wrap versus rigid wrap. Saved us $4,004. I approved the utility revisions. That was $32,117. Utility revisions on that to get, clarify for you guys. So, <clears throat> Mr. Walker had found an error in the drawing, not an error. He suggested because a lot of our water lines were under concrete, under the parking lot. So, Mr. Walker is Harry Walker, Harry Bridge. Walker, okay. Bridge. Um, so, he worked civil because that's why we brought him in on this project because he's a civil engineer <laughs> and he proposed a move that moved every not all of it but most of it from underneath the concrete run up and then the station that everything works from the water line the sewer line or electrical is all right there and we only have about an eight foot um, pipe that's under our uh, driveway which we can re that really helps so that that is why that was approved it also included and if you remember back when we were doing the bid process I said there was a lot of things that we didn't know we didn't know in this um, and one of them was the maintenance 
storage shed stub out so that whoever we get to build that would have a place to get to. Well, that's in that in that utility revision. Also, okay. would have a place to get to. We will have a place to join on to. Now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because we don't want to be breaking up concrete after to get me water and <laughs> sewer at the new place. So, um, the next revision I put on hold. Um, we put on hold. Sorry, not I. But we had a meeting and the commissioners. I'm. I'm being selfish in a way because I know who's going to take care of it. So it's a flooring revision. It's PMP three. It's half carpet, half LDT. Um, I brought this up. I was kind of shocked about the cost increase of doing that because I thought it would be break even or cheaper. But I'm not a flooring guy, so. So that cost is $7,196. Now, I will tell you the only reason that I'm going to lobby for it, and if you guys just tell me no, we'll just stay all carpet, I'm okay with that. But no, it's going to cost us in the long run because carpet is a maintenance time stealer, custodian time stealer. If somebody drops pop or soda water, as you guys call it. Um, Coke. It's all Coke. What if it's Pepsi? It's no Coke. Coke. Okay. Strawberries, your problem. <laughs> Coke. <laughs> so, and Three. You got that around the hole. Uh, it's just a Coke. time it's just a time stealer for maintenance. Yeah. I, for for LVT, I can come in, mop it up, and we're gone. Carpet's not like that. Carpet, I have to run the steam cleaner, and if it's blood, then I got to do a whole different other thing. So I'm I'm a fan of doing the half and half, but I know we're in a money crunch, and. Um, well, you said we're in a money crunch, but we're not out of budget within the parameters no, of our project. But this, correct, Judge, but this was not in, this wasn't one that was set in there. I understand. So it we was talked a, about it, but we never came to a dis because, conclusion. Absolutely, because we didn't have a cost. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we, we were. We anticipated it would be about a That's cost. Absolutely. Yeah. And then when it come back, $7,000, I was like, uh-oh. But you're talking about how many courtrooms? Let's be clear. Three, Three courtrooms. So to make it half commercial tile and uh -huh. half carpet right. it is an additional $7,000. 7100 For all three? Yes, yes, ma'am. That's not a humongous change. Oh, that's worth the money. Uh, okay, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, because I presented you just made it to a you guys, one. <laughs> and I presented it as it was gonna, I, in my mind, I thought it was gonna break even. I, I wasn't expecting that. That's why I didn't say as go with construction. It. That's right. It okay, was not as a, construction. That's right. I'd, I'd like to ask the two commissioners, Commissioner Cox and Commissioner Mallet, uh, members of the building committee, does that seem like a reasonable and a right thing for us to do? I think so, yes, absolutely. Yeah, the biggest, I guess one of the biggest issues we, when we put carpet in the whole thing was, was for sound quality. Sure. And I don't yeah. think there's a big difference with part, at least part of that being, being uh, Right, and that they, they checked in on that. Right. Well, we're hoping that there's enough insulation in the walls that the walls will help absorb some of the sounds. But and keep it part carpet up in the front, you know, where it's... Yeah where they talk the most. Where it makes talks. sense though over the long haul, over the life of the building, right. to spend seven thousand dollars now and not replace carpet ten years yeah. from now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So yeah. it just makes sense. Okay. So I'll sign sign off on that one. Uh, number four security revisions. Uh, it's PMP four. It has been rejected. It was for twenty four thousand seven hundred and fifty seven dollars. There's some things that, on that, and and again, I'm I'm not a security guy, so I had to bring in um, Greg, and 
what I thought was happening was happening. They were trying to um, put in cameras that are no longer going to be used or built, correct? I look in it. Obsolete. Yeah. Obsolete is the word, yes. So I was like, mm, no, no, we're not going to do that. So we had a meeting with Greg, myself, and Michael Lloyd. They come around. He has approved the cameras that he wants, and he has some stipulations in that. Michael then sent that over, and he rejected it. I haven't rejected it. He rejected it first because he wanted further backup, and I think that was a stipulation um, that uh, Mr. Cannon put in on the cameras only if they were compatible with his system. So I think that's why it got, one reason it got rejected. Um, and it, so it needed further backup in the scope and the sub is, be, is being required to sub, sub, substantial um, proof of the cost that he's charging us with all the changes. That's why that got um, rejected. And how much was the change order again? The uh, it's a uh, modification. It's uh, uh, twenty-four thousand seven hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Okay. Is there any questions about that? But you don't have an answer yet. No, no. And and right now I, I'm not going to sign over until until Mr. Cannon says he's okay with what's happening with that. I, I won't sign that. And for those watching, Mr. Cannon is our IT director. Is there any questions about PMP4? Nope. What's that called? PMP4? What does that stand for? PMP4. Oh, project modification. Oh, okay. We have 40 rain and mud days right now. Okay. Interior beams are complete. Oh, cool. Awesome. Here comes the good news <laughs> for you, bad for me. North exterior, exterior are done. Pier caps on the north side are complete. Pouring the, pouring the north side slab Friday at 5.30 a.m. Wow. Awesome. So we'll have a slab. Partial slab. Why is that bad news for you? Because I got to be out there at 5:30, <laughs> <laughs> and then I got to be here at 3:30 for a budget hearing. <laughs> Not a good Friday. <laughs> um, so I had a question about the extended parking lot. You had asked me about that, Judge. It was slated to go in, but they had to. Um, move it because of COVID-19 because they're doing all the slab work they're doing the plumbing they're doing electrical undergrounds and that would have put their whole crew at risk yeah no. so they was like the slab has priority I asked them to give me uh, a time frame when that could be done and they said the next couple months my, so, my question to you though was strictly a curiosity question is it was not a mandate no no, no okay. i get it. it but if i'm asked a question from the judge or any commissioner i'm going to clear it up okay thank you um and, and i did that at, in the parking lot i'm talking about commissioners was that front extension of the sheriff's office it's now gravel yeah because we moved cars in the very beginning and yeah. you know so yeah so okay. we're gonna that's gonna be done within the next couple months is what they were telling me Fair and, enough. I'm, and i'm okay with that So that does your that does all your updates for this time. Is there any questions about, from me from you guys to me? Do you want some company Friday? What's that? Do you want any company on Friday? Huh? Okay. okay. I'm all if you want to come with. Thank you. Thank Al. you. You're welcome. Why don't you, su I suggest you ask and see if somebody will switch times with you. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, they want they want maintenance for some reason at the end. I don't know why that is. Because we're tired, buddy. <laughs> It'll take long. Thank you, Mr. Peeler. Yes, sir. Agenda item number six: Grimes County IT Director Greg Cannon discuss and take action to approve authorization to access telephone provider records and audit agreement between Grimes County and the Spyglass Group LLC. Attachment number six. Greg, that sounds ominous. Tell us all about it. Uh, thank you, Commissioner and Judge. Um, yes, I'm seeking uh, approval for the court to take action to allow us to engage with Spyglass to do an audit of our communication lines. Uh, Spyglass is a company that's been around over 20 years. They're based out of Ohio, and all they do is audit your telecommunications bills, whether it's cell phones, uh, landlines, uh, internet connections, and it costs us nothing unless they can find us savings. Uh, so the process is what it is. We sign a letter of authorization that uh, gives them the ability to look at our bills. We sign that, send that to CenturyLink, suddenly whoever, and they can gather the bills for the last several years. And they look for things like uh, things that I couldn't do on a timely basis. They look at like rate changes, tariff changes in the law. And what they do is they go back to the carrier and says, look, you, the rates and the tariffs changed on this circuit in 2016, but you've been billing the customer mm -hmm. at, at the same rate. We want a refund. And uh, essentially they get paid only if they're able to provide us cost savings. They get part, uh, depending on if it's a cost uh, reduction, or let's see, if it's a uh, cost recovery, for instance, like a tariff change, they get 50% of that cost of what, what they're saving us. Um, there's also service elimination savings. So if they say, hey, you don't need this circuit any longer, your contract's 12 more months, instead of paying CenturyLink, we pay them that 12 months and then we're done with our obligation. Uh, this engagement doesn't cost us anything unless uh, we engage with them. So what they do is it, the, the process runs for about four to six weeks. They look at our bills for four to six weeks and they come back with a, a recommendation of what they found. We can either say, you know, thank you very much. We're not, we're, we're not going to do anything. We get to keep all the audits, all the analysis, uh, everything that they did for our account, but we don't have to pay them anything. We only, the only cost that we are, occur is if we engage with them and uh, they save us some money. We we uh, split that cost with them. Mary Nichols, uh, she and I have had this discussion for a while. She did a tremendous amount of work before I got here uh, looking at the bills. Uh, and we feel that we've got some circuits that we're paying for that we don't need to be paying for, mm -hmm. uh, circuits that weren't turned off. Yeah. Um, so she's done a tremendous amount of work. Uh, I think it's probably worthwhile for us to engage this company. Like I said, they'll show us what they think they've found. We can either say, no, we're not gonna do it, or let's engage and then whatever cost savings we split with them. How, how far back does the liability fall on the provider? I, I'm not sure I'd have to ask him. I, I know he's mentioned going back two to three years, but I don't know what the liability is with the individual provider, like Suddenlink or CenturyLink. I, I, I'm guessing it's probably two years, but I'm not sure. As we always ask, has Mr. Fultz seen this letter? Yes, I've sent everything over to uh, Mr. Fultz, and he has no uh, objections to the contract the way it's written. So at the end of the day, there's no out-of-pocket money for us. It's just that we share in the savings that they find. Correct. Judge Commissioners, we, we've done this. Uh, this, matter, this type of matter has been considered before. I mm -hmm. want to say the auditor brought a different company to the table, and I don't know if we got any savings. I don't recall what happened with that. But I don't think we I, ever moved forward, forward did we? Uh, yes, we did, and, but they didn't find anything, and I just... I disagree. I really believe that uh, we have quite a few lines that are not in use and we're paying for them. Yeah. And I think it would be a great idea seeing what I know about the Navasota Annex and how we change providers 
CenturyLink, Suddenlink, and U.S. Phone, and I think it could be some savings there because we weren't sure who's connected, still connected, who's not, you know. So I was in the uh, old office at Stoneham uh, last week unloading some stuff in there that I picked up at the surplus store, and I put something on that desk and knocked the phone off, and it started the the yeah the dial tone. This was supposed to have been cut off three years ago because I reported it, and it, it's still in, in effect. I'm sure we'll probably find some fax lines. They're not real expensive, but if you get several of those, you know, like that can add up. Yeah. I, I imagine there's probably several of those that are out there that are still active. May, may not be anything connected to them, but uh, those typically are the ones that get lost in the shuffle. It's probably a fax line in there, too, I, w I would bet. Is this, would, I don't know. But with this, going through this and finding these lines now, would that assist us when we make the move over to the new facility? Absolutely. Yeah. Because it would allow us to reduce our footprint, or, you know, the number of lines that we think we've got to port when we work with the telecommunications to port lines and port numbers over. Yeah. Right. If, we, if there's some that we no longer need, we can eliminate those and don't have to worry about porting them. The problems with porting numbers. Get there. This is, this is across the board, all telecommunications? Yeah, we're going to have them check the windstream communications, which is up in the aisle of the barn, and uh, the JP1 office, uh, the Navasota offices, uh, including adult probation, and the old hospital, because there used to be an office at the hospital there, yep. and then plus all the circuits uh, in Anderson. And I know they're still line connected because we're still getting billed for something at home Judson. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like I said, they, they will come back after four to six weeks, show us what they found. We, we can take it and say, thank you, we're not going to engage, there's no cost. Or we say, we want to do just this portion right. so we don't have to do the whole thing. If there's just one thing that we want to do out of that engagement, we just engage them on that one thing. But I guess I don't understand. I mean, if it's no cost to us and it's all about we share the savings, why wouldn't we want to engage? Yeah, it's only on those uh, elimination, those cost reductions, where if we're if we're bound by the contract to continue to pay, oh, okay, we ha we instead of paying the provider, we pay them right. for twelve months, and then they're they're done. We're out of the engagement. Yeah. Is that what the twelve times? Yes. Is that negotiable? I don't know. <laughs> I have to ask them. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably not because the amount of time they have to put in in this audit in the first four to six weeks. But I can always ask them. Sure. Yeah. Don't ask, you don't get. That's right. If, if there are no further questions, then I make the motion that we approve the authorization to access telephone provider records and audit agreement between Grimes County and the Spyglass Group, LLC. Second. I think Commissioner Malik got you there. Commissioner Malik has There's a motion before the court on agenda item number six by Commissioner Walker, seconded by Commissioner Mallet. Is there further discussion? I'm for this. Is it going to be great? I'll add uh, the judge as signatory. Is that okay, Commissioner Mallet, with you? Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number seven uh, Grimes County Commissioner Precinct 3, Commissioner Walker. Discuss an approved National Dislocated Worker NDW Temporary Disaster Relief Employment COVID-19 2020 Worksite Agreement between Grimes County and Workforce Solutions, Brazos Valley, CR Attachment Number 7. This was an opportunity to, because of COVID-19, there is um, a National Dislocated Worker Temporary uh, disaster relief program and this is where the workforce will provide workers at their cost to work for 20 I mean 2080 hours or part-time 
um, to assist in the cleanup and the humanitarian efforts associated with COVID-19. So as a court, as, as, as a county, I felt it necessary to try to ask if we could have some of the employees because our courtrooms have to be cleaned, our offices need to be cleaned on a daily basis from, you know, the public coming in and, and, and the employees being present also. It will protect everyone in the long run. And uh, I did get it over to Mr. Uh, Fultz. Did you see any concerns? Okay. So I also asked Mr. Uh, Peeler if he would be responsible as the supervisor uh, listed on the agreement, the designee to work with the Workforce Solutions of Brazos County, Brazos Valley, to uh, receive the three employees that we'll have for starting as soon as they can process them. And they will uh, vet them, they will do the background checks, they will do the uh, uh, um, fingerprinting and all of that. The worker is their responsibility. It's just left up to the supervisor to make sure that you get the time sheets in, that everything works accordingly. And he will be the uh, coordinator between the Workforce Solution and Grimes County. So I thought it was a wonderful opportunity. If I could have got more workers, we would have. <laughs> oh, <that's okay. laughs> Commissioner, if you don't mind, would you clarify who pays for this? Uh, the Work First Commission. Yes. I, I, I thought I said that, but maybe I didn't say it loud no, enough. No, it's no, the no. mask. OK. <laughs> uh, they will pay for the employees. So all benefits, uh, the hourly wages, and they are also part of this program, just to put it out there, if you're a dislocated worker without a job, they will train you at no cost. Uh, once you're trained, they will place you. So this is a great program that's coming down from the federal government that's been handled by BBCOG and the workforce. So I think it's a great opportunity to make sure that uh, we stay safe and provide jobs at the same time for people who are dislocated. Where will the workers come from? Will they come from the county or will they brought, be brought in from outside of the county? There are people that come through the workforce, okay. so they're not from Grimes County. But Grimes County citizens can participate. They even will consider if you have someone, if once they run them through the program, they will um, place them with you. Okay. But, you know, um, like we were discussing early, many times people are all are on unemployment. Right. And right now this doesn't look that glorious to them, but at some point the unemployment runs out. Yes. Okay, so, but if you need a job, please contact Workforce Solutions. They are willing to train. Uh, they have all types of jobs that are available. And, and uh, you can be asked. You can't ask to be placed in Grimes County. They had 12 workers, and we were able to get three. Would you like to add something to that? Yeah, Peter? so I, I'm very thankful Commissioner Walker has done this for us. Um, and also, um, I have a bigger goal in sight. For me, I always look forward way down the road. It also lets me have these three employees to see how they're going to work with everything in Grimes County that we got coming up. And that will allow me to train, hopefully, the personnel that we just moved right into the Justice Center. And they're going to be right there. They know how it works. They know how I expect things. So that will help us in the long run. We're getting um, nine months, I believe it is, or 28 hours. 12 years. months or 2,080 they, hours. Yeah, they, they specify March 31st, so I don't know in that. But um, that's, gonna, that, that's a big asset for us. I mean, because then we just move it in, and I don't have hardly any training to do. And that takes some time off me. So I can't be more thankful to Commissioner Walker on this. I, um, 
being very aggressive about it. And that was one of the points I left out. These people are for hire once this uh, temporary, it's called temporary because their That's hopes good. is that you're going to hire them. You're going to like the work that they do. So you can, if they're interested, like he says, you can hire them on after this temporary period of 12 months in. And the, so. and the pay is over $12 an hour. Yes. It's 12.35. It's, it's, but we had to, Correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner, but we had to match our lowest paid in, the, in my department. And that half, it's 12.35, but that's what they pay. Now, I'm still looking down the road. At the end of the road, I can say, okay, look, it's $12, we'll hire you at $12 because we're giving you benefits. Okay. So, I mean, there's always a way. Yeah, that 35 cents a lot, but we, we I budgeted in for twelve and twelve fifty. So okay. Now we're getting into the budget hearing. I won't sit down. You know, this is one of those deals that comes along, and at least for me, reading this, and I'm like, this is too good to be true. Something's, <laughs> something's just not right here. But after reading this and talking with Commissioner Walker and Al, uh, um, I mean, this is definitely something, in my opinion, that the county could benefit from, as well as it benefits those folks that that need a job right now. Um, well, I, I'm grateful to the contacts at the Workforce Solution for uh, giving me uh, an opportunity to um, bring it to Grimes County. But I also want to say that um, we're in a crisis mode with this pandemic and people are feeling the pressures they want to provide for their family. So this is a great way for them to get back. Everybody doesn't want to receive unemployment. Some people want to work. And so I hope that you, my hope is that you will get someone that wants to work with Grimes County because this is a great place to work. And that's my hope because with all of the COVID-19 issues we're seeing, we know that this is going to continue for a while, that we keep things clean and sanitized. And that added to his workload tremendously. So this is a way, just like we got the uh, mandates down from the 12th court, from our judges, on how they want the courtrooms cleaned. This will help him uh, make sure that that's done on a daily basis. So I'm just grateful to the Workforce Solutions. With that being said, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I'll make the motion to approve the National Dislocated Worker Temporary Disaster Relief Employment COVID-19 2020 Worksite Agreement between Grimes County and Workforce Solution uh, Brazos Valley uh, with the county judge as the signatory. Second. Ooh, I almost fainted on that one. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number seven by Commissioner Walker, seconded by Commissioner Cox. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. We will now go to Road and Bridge Engineer, Mr. Harry Walker, for the Road and Bridge Report. Is he out there? No. We have the road and bridge report in front of us. Commissioners, are there any questions or comments that we need to follow up with our road and bridge engineer? I know that we're getting ready to pave 180 or part of it last week. Okay. I, I didn't check with Harry. Didn't ask him yesterday when I talked to him, but they were planning on paving it last Thursday. I I also received notice from um, from his office that they are doing uh, bridge replacements. Have some of them from the 2015 grant process. All of those bridges that we um, signed an agreement with uh, TxDOT, some of those bridges are now being replaced. They saw the need to go ahead and, and move them up. So I was glad to see that because uh, we have a few out on County Road 323. They're going to go ahead and replace those bridges. So, uh, so uh, I hate he wasn't here to 
talk about it, but um, hope everything's fine. Good. I didn't uh, get an opportunity to talk to him, but one of the items that's on his report is um, power issues. The, the, the completion of the new maintenance barn may be delayed some because of power issues. No, the tower's up. The tower's up. Power I'll, issues. Power. The power issue's been taken okay. care of. We're waiting on text dot approval from text dot to cross 2445. The tower at 2445 was put up last Friday and it is operational and they were going to install, uh, they're ready to install the, the internet in our new building out there as soon as we get the power in there. So, so this is a cell tower that you're talking about yes. that was erect from, okay. from that cell cox. Crimescounty.net. That's good. They put an 85 foot tower out there, so it's going so we got to reach out. Have a lot of reach. internet in the area. <laughs> yeah, and there are people out there that are that are wanting it. I've, I've got a couple of uh, people in that area that have contacted me, wanting to know, and I said, well, as soon as they get that tower up, it'll be it'll be ready to go. Do you know what the the uh, outreach for that tower would be? Well, the one that I have is 45. And I know part of I'm sorry, but part of it's visual, too. Yeah. Yes, sight. Mine is 45 feet tall, and, and the, the maximum he said they would go on it to be safe would be five miles. That one's almost double of that, so I, I would think Most probably seven to ten miles. Seven to ten miles. Yeah. Wow. So he, they could, they might possibly be able to reach your property from that. Would tower. you climb that tower and see if you see my house? <laughs> no, but I know somebody that will. <laughs> That'd be interesting, but I'm not climbing the tower. All right. Are there any comment? Any other uh, comments or questions on the road and bridge report? I would be glad to get those to our engineer. All right, with that, we're going to go to agenda item number eight, Grimes County Attorney, Mr. John C. Foltz. Mr. Foltz. I'll just make a couple of comments about other items, if I might. I think we'll all probably call the building the JBC, just like we call the LEC the LEC. So regardless of what the sign says I think we know what how people will refer to it and then for Commissioner Walker so that she doesn't think you don't have to read the whole item when you make the motion you thank can say, you. I make a motion that we approve the agreement that's attached to the agenda and thank you so much sir. I appreciate <laughs> you for reminding me of that sure and then lastly I would say um, for the road and bridge report some of you may recall uh, years ago there just used to be a provision that said road and bridge report period that's it and the road and bridge administrator or engineer would get up and give his uh, song and dance about the various things that were going on there was an AG opinion that came out around that time that indicated because he is an employee of uh, the county or subordinate of the court you have some idea what he's going to say and he should put those things on the agenda um, so that uh, the world can be advised what he may talk about um, I have seen an agenda not too long ago uh, that reminds me that um, some folks may not um, have put a lot of stock in the AG's opinion on that issue. But Mr. Walker and I have talked about, you certainly don't need him to read the same thing you have in black and white, unless, of course, you know you want the folks on the camera to hear the, what he has to say. Uh, I've said to him facetiously that at some point it'll be like the treasurer and the auditor uh, were at some point in the past where they would just say, as submitted, and be done. Uh, but that's for you all to handle. All those things were on the agenda, and I didn't want to interrupt at those moments, but I thought appropriate to talk about. And I'll, I will interject that the agenda is always posted on our website uh, 72 hours in advance of the commissioner's court meeting. So if you have access to a computer, you can bring up the website. All right. Please continue. I'll get to the item that's got my name next to it now and uh, stop delaying this. Um, this hearing, uh, I asked Corey to request from Cherie that the item be placed back the way that it originally was. I failed to ask that the change be made to the language to say discuss and take action to exchange, not change. We're exchange. We're considering an exchange of land as permitted by the local government code. Um, this, as you will recall, has already been addressed by the court. Uh, it's a possible exchange with um, Jim Westmoreland and owns property 
point says to the <coughs> to the east of the uh, existing or to the uh, JBC site, and so um, as uh, the judge has indicated previously, this would give us an opportunity to have additional access to Highway 90. Uh, Jim Westmoreland has indicated he's willing to swap a uh, strip of land that extends from Highway 90 to the JBC site um, in exchange for the county giving him a piece of property of equal value that is uh, essentially north of the JBC site. And so um, all of that to say, uh, we proposed this, the commissioner's court approved a proposal effectively that we took back to, and I said we, um, I, along with the judge, effectively took the offer back to Jim Westmoreland, and he was in agreement with most of the terms, but he had a couple of requests that he wanted to propose essentially as a counteroffer. Uh, first, I think of the primary importance is he wants a reversionary provision in the agreement that says if the road is not built, uh, and specifically not built timely, uh, then he wants the property to revert back to him. He, in his mind, he's doing this exchange so that there will be a road on the property that he's given up if there's not going to be a road that he doesn't want to uh, engage in this exchange. Uh, we talked about timetable. Uh, you all may recall, I think we had, uh, I think we discussed this, I certainly know it was in the proposed agreement, 18 month timetable, uh, 18 month from the signing of the agreement uh, that the road would be constructed. Uh, he asked that that be reduced to 12 months. Um, we, I had a meeting with the judge and Mr. Westmoreland, the judge felt confident that 12 months was, was a reasonable request. Um, we had an opportunity though to rehash the two foot reserve issue and I want to hand out to you first the survey this is the survey of Mr. Westmoreland's property. Thank you. Not for our purposes, but for uh, what he already had. And you don't need to include that in the minutes if you don't want to okay. that because it's his survey. He paid for it. I'd sure. rather not give it to the. Okay. Put it out there in the minutes if we don't have to, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it's going to potentially be used to come up with our property description. Um, so, first give you that, and then let me give you uh, this is what we do in my office is coloring and whatnot, drawing pictures. You stay within the lines. Cor Corey always gets excited when I give her a project like this, although I will admit I did this one. Sorry, I didn't have to talk about the copy <laughs> All right, one last one. Notice those have titles at the top. I'll probably refer to those by the title at the top. All right, you will see. Um, on the survey that I first handed out, on Mr. Westmoreland's property, uh, years ago, uh, 1980, as I recall, the Anderson Shiro Consolidated School District uh, bought from Mr. Westmoreland's predecessor, as I recall, Mr. Borsky, um, a 40-foot wide strip. And you can see that at the bottom of that survey. So that was cut off of the triangular piece that's in the middle of your survey. And um, they pay, the deed recites that they paid $10,000 for approximately one acre of land back in 1980. I'm scratching my head and I'm saying, this just doesn't make any sense. Why would they have paid $10,000 for one acre of land in 1980 when, keep in mind, the school district has the property to the south of that. And so why did they buy from Mr. Borsky's 40 foot wide strip um, that was just north of their property? Why not take 40 feet off of their north line and not have to buy anything at all? Um, Mr. Westmoreland says that his recollection, and, and um, I feel like he's uh, being sincere about it, his recollection was that they were talk, there was some talk about the school district wanting access from 90 to the back of their property. 
but he doesn't know any more than that, and I don't know any more than that, and I suspect there are lots of folks that, uh, from this area that would have some recollection of why that was done in 1980. Um, but what that reminded me of as I, as I was getting further into preparing the agreement was exactly what we discussed about the two-foot reserve, and that is if you keep, I'm going to have to steal it back here because I give you my copy. Wave in your face. Um, so on the uh, document that it says exchange without overlay, you will see that R number uh, one R it's R eleven six six one or five five one. Who knows what that is? Uh, maybe five. Uh, that's the uh, Westmoreland track, and you can see this, the corporate uh, limits of Anderson go through the middle of that track. And so it's the south line of that track that we're talking about. Um, but right now, that 40 feet that I just mentioned that the school acquired is south of that red line. Okay, so it's not within the boundaries of Mr. Mr. Westmoreland's track now. It was severed in 1980. Um, Mr. Westmoreland is willing to exchange 100 feet that will start at that red line and go north. Um, and that's shown on the document, uh, the aerial that I gave it's entitled Exchange. That blue, and this is, uh, I, tried, I tried my best to get really close uh, to, to showing that uh, uh, as, as, as the width would be on the ground. Uh, and so that 100 feet is about uh, what that blue line indicates. Now, that green is where that 40 feet uh, is that the school previously acquired. Then you see the red boundary that's between, uh, that's, that's above the green line there, that's intended to represent the boundary between the two properties. And then I'm showing in yellow uh, where that two-foot reserve would be. So I felt like there may, have, may not have been a uh, great clarity about what I was proposing. And to be honest with you, I'm proposing it as an idea, but not to be an advocate of it, uh, not to be a, um, a person who's telling you do it or don't do it, but simply saying that I've seen it done multiple times in a development circumstance where a developer will have a cul-de-sac or a road that extends and it looks like it goes to the boundary of his subdivision, but he'll maintain a one-foot reserve, a two-foot reserve, some area between the road and the boundary so that the neighbors who are the people that have the adjoining property can't just attach to his road. Mm -hmm. um, and because if that happens, you put an additional burden of any traffic that's now on these roads that can go through to the additional property. So if the neighbor right. cuts his into a hundred pieces, and now you have a hundred or however many house, how many people in the house will drive a vehicle, now driving up and down the roads in the in the first subdivision, it's a burden that wasn't expected. It's an increase in traffic. It's, it's an extent, uh, increase in maintenance. You have increased cost. You have also uh, increased uh, traffic and, and whatever. Uh, ills may come with traffic. So I proposed that or I was walking through this the last time that I was here. Uh, Mr. Walker and I indicated to you all that Mr. Walker um, wasn't necessarily a, an advocate of that or a proponent of that, which is fine. I, I don't mean to say that this needs to be done, but Mr. Westmoreland in his response to us said um, he would like to see that part of this agreement. And so I told him that when I came back with the reversionary interest provision for 12 months, that I would also walk back through this thing and make sure I had the, uh, the court was certain that they did, the court did not want to involve it or the court was willing to do it. And, and uh, he said to us, it's not a deal breaker, but um, he thinks it's a good idea and would ask that we revisit it since we're already having a revisit now. now the yellow uh, would be the still owned by Mr. Westmoreland. Uh, it had very little value to anybody in the, in the market, let's say. It might have value certainly to the school. He could sell it to the folks at the school, uh, and they would be probably happy to have it, and they may be paying more than what they previously paid for 40 feet. Now, um, but if Mr. Westmoreland said, I'm not selling it to anybody, uh, or his successor's entitled, I'm not selling it to anybody, what that means is you've automatically, in my brain, you've automatically limited the traffic on the road to half. So you'll only have traffic coming from the north side getting onto the county road, and you won't have traffic from the south side getting onto the road because they can't legally cross that yellow uh, strip um, unless they have uh, the consent of West, Mr. Westmoreland. Now, I think uh, it, it's, it's certainly appropriate to consider 
is this showing some favoritism for Mr. Westmoreland? Is this, you know, what, what's this? Well, I think it's potentially considering favoritism for the county road, for the road that's being constructed. Uh, if, if you consider this is the school district property, and if you consider they previously acquired that green area with thoughts of using that for themselves, and they paid it looks like a high price, if they were to, and this is, you know, we could tilt at all kind of windmills if we want to, but if they were to construct a bus barn or to use this area for buses, and you don't have that yellow strip, then they can get, just like Mr. Westmoreland can from the north side, they can from the south side get access to the blue strip. And that then uh, puts additional traffic uh, as well as eventual, uh, additional wear and tear on uh, the roads. Um, if you consider we're uh, providing, the, or the, the court is going to have this road constructed so that uh, you have additional access to the JVC, and let's say you have buses running at 8 o'clock and you have people going to work at 8 o'clock, and let's say you have folks that have jury duty at 8 o'clock, if all of that happens on, in the same location, Potentially, it may not happen within the next year or five or even ten, maybe it's 20 or 30 years. But if you have all that traffic that's on this road, but you look back and say we have an ability to limit it to half the traffic, is this a moment in time where you want to do that? And that's that's really the question that's on the table. Um, again, I don't want to tell you it really needs to be done or has to be done. It just occurred to me that it was an opportunity to cut in half the amount of traffic and basically the burden on the road. And if you had that opportunity, you might want to do that, and I brought. I was the guy that brought it up, and probably uh, stupidly so. I could have just sat quietly and left it alone. Um, but it seems to me, at least, it was worthy of, of a conversation. And now, Mr. Westmoreland has put it back in our laps to uh, continue the discussion. And uh, if you all say no, uh, we don't want to do it. We want to make it where any folks can have access from the south as well as from the north. That's fine. I don't think this is going to make the deal go away. But he did want to revisit it. Uh, lastly, I'd say to you that Mr. Walker posed to me something I think is certainly worthy of consideration, but again, we can tilt it all the windmills we want to. What if the county at some point acquired the school district property, and now the county wants to get access onto the Blue Road? Well, what I, I guess what I don't get is, you know, you, the school already, already had the ability to do this, they just never constructed the road. Well, if the county bought that property, you'd still own from 90 to the JVC regardless of whether you had the right to get on the road or not. Um, but you would have to then acquire either an easement across the yellow, or you'd have to buy the yellow from Mr. Westmoreland or his successor in time. Or you go around the yellow. Yeah, yeah, however you want to treat it. Okay, well, so now we've gone through coloring and maps and whatever else, and I've stayed too long. So you tell me what you want to talk about if anything. Well, you did a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But in your last scenario that you described. <laughs> Uh, it would be easy if the county at some point bought this property you have this property that adjoins the county property as it is to me the yellow line wouldn't be a significant issue then at that point because you just connect to the road to the east, to the west of it or if if you if the county bought that property there and, and it, Lord knows what we'd be using it for, but potentially you're going to have a road from 90 that gets you onto it, to whatever building you want there, and then you could have access out the back to the JVC for whatever reason you wanted that access, but that wouldn't necessarily be, the intention wouldn't be a road all the way through because you already got the blue right. road. Right, there you go. Yeah, so if you wanted access from 90, you got it, from you access to the JVC, you got it. So I don't necessarily see that, see that as a significant hurdle. Right, the road would. <laughs> but I do have a quote. Some would say, some would say Rattler Blue and some would say Owl Blue, I think. Not, not as in that Owl. O-W-L. Okay. <laughs> so what if Mr. Westmoreland, he has the ability to also sell this to the Anderson School? The yellow, you mean? Correct. He, he would own it just like he owns the rest of the property he's going to have after the road. So that is a possibility in that happening. Right, right. And, and that's, you know, that's a business transaction. It's not us. Did you make an effort at this moment to try to limit the, uh, the burden on the road? Okay. And or did you, by doing this, put Mr. Westmoreland in a position that you don't typically put other folks in? And so is it unfair to do this? I don't think it's unfair. What if Mr. Westmoreland were to say, and he's not effectively saying this, but he's gotten close. 
I only want to exchange it if you're going to give me the two foot reserve. And if he said that, you'd still say, hey, we need the road. This is for the benefit of the county, right. the benefit of the facilities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I don't think you're, you're not looking at it from my perspective, you're not looking at it and saying, this is unfair with Mr. Or to the world because Mr. Westmoreland is getting benefit. Uh, he happens to be situated right where we need a road. No, I just need clarity on Sure, it. sure, I got you. So, and by the way, I did propose that we did propose to him an exchange or a conveyance of just the blue with no exchange. I think I told that at the last meeting, and he said, no, that, that wasn't the deal he was thinking about. I'm sorry. So, if, the, uh, if Mr. Westmoreland retains the reserve and he sells to the school district, and it's the court's goal to limit access to the road. Could the school district, since they bought that reserve, then have access to the road? Yes, yeah. They could even buy just an easement as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that could. So, they can figure out a way to have access to the road regardless of whether or not there's a reserve. Potentially, yeah, yeah that's right. And it costs them something. There is a cost to them. And, and think about there's also the issue we talked about this of. Way up at the corner of 90, um, is somebody going to, what if the school or somebody, what if the school tells us somebody, are they going to construct a, you know, a C-store or something there at that corner? Um, those, pers those people could still build a convenience store where the green area is uh, and get access to the blue, but they'd have to pay the go. Yeah. But I think the original intent to construct this road was to defeat the traffic issues that allegedly are caused by the school and if that is the case then I don't necessarily know that this road is going to do that but in fact the school can do it anyway whether whether through well the, the lease purchase you've still got traffic issues and probably worse because you're on highway 90 and keep in mind, we're riding this fence where we're calling it a county road so that with Mr. Foyce, for the side can have access as opposed to a driveway. But you could always call it a driveway and say nobody gets access to it. Uh, but I don't think Mr. Westmoreland would be down for that. But I think if we call it a county road, we need to have access on both sides since we've been calling it a county road. We're not the developmental stages as a county. <laughs> yeah, let's put a burden on it. So. That's entirely your call. I, I, it, I just, it struck me as curious. Uh, I was already seeing that there may be some additional burden on the road, but when I discovered there was this 40 foot piece that they bought in 1980, which looks like they bought for a road, they were going to build a road to, to, to get their vehicles, whatever they were, from 90 to the back of their property. God knows why and why they didn't, ever, why they never constructed it. They paid that much, but seeing that. Put it back on my radar to say uh, this, is, uh, this is significant to me and then that's when jim walks in the door and says hey i i see now the benefit of this and i think this is a good idea i'd like for you all to really consider this uh with some more scrutiny but i'm not saying it's a deal breaker john i think the reason that they did that in 1980 was because the the property line was where the green is there now it's very close to the to the ag shop but you don't see the building that was there at that time the school building right what they did at that time and keep in mind that the school burned in 79 or 80 somewhere along in there and they had to renovate it <clears throat> when they did they used that for, and they did put a road in there it was it was not a paved road it was a road they lined the buses up back there and loaded the buses <clears throat> excuse me behind the main building in the ag shop and that's that's the way that was set up because there was a road where this driveway is right there at the corner of the property that's where the buses came out of there when they loaded in the afternoon and unloaded in the morning so has anybody talked to the school i mean just i have not for the intent i mean it, it, at some point they had an intent to use this piece of property that's outlined right here for the transportation that's what he was just saying that yeah. they used it but they didn't build it they used it as a road but they didn't put concrete or asphalt on I had talked to them about probably two years, two or three years ago when we started talking about building a, a new building, about selling that property. They never could come to the conclusion whether or not they could sell it, I think. Uh, 
they now have 220 acres where the current high school is, so I don't know that they will ever do anything with that property. And I don't know if they can ever sell it because the way it was deeded to the school district is that it has to stay uh, a school district or it possibly may revert back to the uh, original owners. I, you know, I don't know. I, I haven't done any research on that. And, and they, they still use that property for a lot of basketball tournaments and stuff. Yeah. yeah. For the old so, so yes. you said there was no, um, it was not a deal breaker. That's what Mr. West wanted to indicate to me and to the judge. Because I am of the understanding the reason why, like he just stated, we were even pursuing this is for access for the Grimes County uh, citizens and the workers. Uh, to have another way that wasn't congested. So if that two foot strip leaves that potential of it being congested at some point, is it, if we did the deal and it became the county road, that removes the, the yellow stripe altogether, but it's still a county road. Right, that means that instead of having to pay what Mr. Westmoreland or get his approval to come across the yellow, no consents necessary, just a driveway permit from the county. Which, in turn, if this property were sold from an Anderson school, whoever bought it could pull a permit and say, I want to uh, have an opening to this road. You bet. You, you, you recognize, I'm sure, that by making this a public road, county road, you could have a strip center on either side of this road that runs the entire length of it, that is one shop after another, with multiple driveways in there where people are in and out of that thing all day long. Now, I'm playing the devil's advocate and that's a worst case scenario, but that's what you're allowing. That's what, you, that's what you're setting up the potential for. But what we have now is just a drive on the other side. Correct, and that's why we- It's not a county road. That's why we've drawn the distinction. That's right, that it's just a driveway. Um, it's a driveway versus a public road. Well, can yeah. I play devil's advocate and you say, like what, what is the off. benefit of this road if, if, if all of those things exist? Oh, well, you're, I, I'm playing out from, it's going to be driven by market forces, and I suspect there aren't enough market forces to drive businesses that are in a strip center up and down both sides of this thing, <laughs> at least not today. At, at least point, not today. Like point, you said, yeah. we don't know where we're going to be in the future. Oh, well, that's right. 20 I, years from now, but the whole purpose in spending additional money on this road was for the reasons I just stated, that it was to provide another access that wouldn't be as congested. So if at some point you're gonna have congestion, what was the purpose of us constructing a road for everyone to? It's, it's still a road, it's just like any other road, and it, provide, it will provide that access. And keep in mind, Mr. Westmoreland has indicated he's not uh, willing to do the exchange and give the property to the county or offer the property to the county if he doesn't have access to this side. So in other words, it has to be a county road or can it be deemed a driveway just like the other driveway? Uh, if you, if you it call has it, to be a county road? My fear is, well, when it's a driveway that the county owns, let's be, let's, let's be clear here, and, and, and uh, sometimes I get confused in this thing, I have to remind myself, this is a public facility that we're standing in today. It's owned by the people, taxpayer paid for it. But that doesn't mean you can't control that it's locked at five o'clock or seven o'clock or midnight or wherever it may be. Same thing with the driveway. You would have the drive as an asset that the county maintains. It's a taxpayer asset. But you could limit if whether people could get on or off the side of it, right? I mean, that you have the right to restrict that. You don't necessarily have that when you do this as a public road. And that's the distinction is, if we keep them as driveways now, the ones, the one that exists already, you know, comes up from, uh, 149. Yeah. Um, that's considered a driveway. If it were considered, if that were considered a public road, the two owners to the side could all of a sudden tie in access. They could get a culvert permit and tie in access. Well, that is the issue that we, the, the <laughs> theoretical machinations that we went through for when we were describing this thing. Is it also going to be a driveway? And then we got the issue of uh, no, but we can exclude everybody we want to, just as you're talking about, and limit the burden. Well. Mr. Westmoreland's not willing to offer the property if that's the deal, or at least as far as I know he's not. Maybe he's willing to sell it, I don't know. Um, but if, if the way to overcome that is to say this is going to be a county road like any other county road, whether it has a sow road designation or something else, then 
Uh, you're going to have access, you're going to have people accessing it from Mr. Weston on the side. The only issue I've said is, do you want to make a stab at limiting access from the south side? That may be the best you can do in this circumstance. Or you may say, heck, why are we bending over backwards to make that stab here? And why are we putting Mr. Westmoreland in a situation where now he's going to have this very valuable two-foot piece that he could sell to the landowner to the south? Why are we going to get engaged in all that and make this more difficult than it needs to be? Let's just make it like any other road. I think that's Mr. Walker's position, or has been. <coughs> but the two entry points from 149, they're both designated as driveway, correct? Right? Uh, when you say designated, I, I think in all of our brains it's designated, but I don't know that it's in, in writing anywhere. We clap. Okay. Uh, but, but it didn't say We utilize say those as, as driveways rather than county roads. One of the, the one that's constructed and the one that will be constructed. That's the intent. I did notice, though, that Mr. Caps does have a gate. <laughs> it's going to access that one that's to be constructed. So there may be a question coming as to that. That's, that's only a convenience for him today for him to graze right. his horses over right. on our grass. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm glad you got a beat on that. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. So the, but there is property that adjoins those two driveways so yes. on 149. Yes that don't have an economic advantage per se like mr westmoreland would correct depending on the designation of this piece of property correct you're absolutely right and what mr walker said over and over this is just like jim westmoreland is a developer and he's saying i'm going to give this to the county i'm developing my property and i'm laying this out for it to be a road the, the, the way that this is distinct though is in that circumstance, we typically make the developer bring the road up to county spec. In this case, because the county sees the benefit of access to the ABC kind of facility, the county's willing to spend the money to do that. If the developer said, I want to put a road here in the middle of my property, or on the left side of my property, or on the right side of my property, the developer gets to make that choice. And that's that's the distinction of what we're talking about here when we're calling this a county road versus a driveway. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Well, the, well, the other landowners that, it, that above the the driveways have any type of legal claim that we are showing favoritism to somebody on the other side of Mr. Westmoreland on this side? We've had that conversation, I think, uh, standing here or somewhere near here. Uh, it's an equal protection issue in my mind. And that is, are you treating people differently that are situated the same? Mm -hmm. And the argument would be, and there's arguments I suspect on both sides, the argument would be they're not situated the same. They are different. Uh, one is saying, I will give this, but only as a public road, only as a county road. The others were fee simple, as I understand it, that we owned and we built our own driveway upon. So. And I don't think there's going to be a real issue with congestion. I mean, for the most part, we can limit the number of driveways or where the driveways are, you know, not away from the away from the intersection at 90, you know, a certain distance to kind of help alleviate any congestion or, or traffic problems. And how do we do that? What's the mechanism for well, that? Well, you have to have a permit in order to put a driveway. We say, no, you have to be this far from Highway 90, or you can only have, you know, one, two to your property. Let's say each property is divided up or something. So the other thing is the way... We can limit where it has to go. The other thing is the way the traffic flows here on, on 149, and John, you travel that in the morning a lot of times. I don't know if you're there that early when the school traffic's coming in, but it backs up. Um, Hadn't been a lot of school traffic lately. I, I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I've seen pandemic going on. It, it backs up 149 to to 90 here. If even if they cut through, it's not going to get them to the school any quicker because they're going to have a line of traffic they're going to have to feed into somewhere over there. The other way they come in is go down to to the donut shop and come in that way. To drop off at the elementary school so that's where the traffic flow is from those two areas cutting through the, the law and to the justice center is not going to give them uh, a, a way to get in there quicker it's just not going to it's not going to be feasible so our overall goal is to make sure that the employees here are not stuck in that traffic yes, yes. That, that's the that's the what we're trying to eliminate I because all of those people. Dirty looks when I went to pay taxes one morning. You got I dirty cut, looks. I cut, yeah, I cut in line of somebody that was going to drop their kid off. 
and I was honked at, and I was in trouble. I, I, I'm going to the tax office, not to school. <laughs> so, so this is just like any other county road. We're building a county road that everyone can have access to. That's the question. No, that's the point if we do it. If you don't do the yellow, that's right. If you do the yellow, it's as though it's a developer who's saying, I'm keeping a reserve here. And you get to have some guidance on that and say, this is the potential to limit the burden on the county road. Okay, and so that's get, one of the options. Yeah, that's... Okay. that's but we still would be able to control that at all. Yeah, we're right. It was still, that would be out of our hands. That's right. So if we do it, then I, what I hear, I think I hear you saying, you would suggest that we keep the two foot strip along the south line that at this particular point would limit congestion on the road. What I, what I wanted the court to do was have eyes wide open and consider all of your options and you all were elected to make this decision collectively and I'm totally comfortable with whatever you decide. Okay. So, Thank you. But the contract is writ written, right, as, as of now, with the two-foot wide strip in it, the well, one we have before us. I, I expected to tinker with it. I revised it to put in the 12-month reversionary interest issue, and I think, uh, yeah, I've also got the two-foot in it, and I've got the revised and quarter of the date that we revised it, which was 6-4, so I don't think you all have seen it. I don't see the reversion. Uh, Let's see. Um, I don't know if you have it. It's on page two, under paragraph B, the third full paragraph. Your, yours may not. Okay, it. it says twelve months. Okay. Yeah. And the two is strip that, is at the top. Say that again, Commissioner. Sorry. Okay, there is a reasonable place. So let's say if we started it and it's been twelve months and haven't completed it, it's not going to roll back, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Um, I can, we can pin this down, we can make it as convoluted as uh, the other contract is about who gets to debt. Fortunately, in the other contract, we get to say that the architect decides whether or not this counts as a rain day and the first the contractor has to seek permission from the architect and get it designated as such. This doesn't go that far. I, I see the fact that we're actually different. in the process of doing it because we, we would approve money for it, so it's just a matter of right. getting it designed. <clears throat> do some soil testing and stuff, so the actual start date may, you know, be able to look at it. Potentially could be right. pushing it all that close. This would be a fact issue, and if somebody wanted to litigate it, then you could litigate what is a reasonable delay attributable to weather or the like. Um, I just took a quick stab at it because it seemed to me that based upon your response today, we might still need to tinker with it a bit. So I'll be happy to try to make it as clear as we possibly can. But I we can we can definitely probably start it within a, within 12 months. It just depends on our contract here. But I mean, if we've got the plans for it and right. sign the contract for it, would he be good with it as well? And it's going to be done. It's not within that 12 months. I think your suggestion I put in will begin construction rather than will construct. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's fine. So. The driveway portion, the permitting. Who who has control of whether or not permit is issued? Is that on the consent agenda, or will that be something that's brought before the court for a vote? To my knowledge, you have never seen a driveway. Uh, those are always done by road bridge, and they're done that they're done in house. Yes. And I don't know what their uh, parameters are. I, I don't know. I, I'm assuming it's got to be a certain distance away from the uh, next driveway so that you don't have uh, a bunch of folks turning in so that it's not a safety issue. Uh, the primary concern, as I understand it, I mean, uh, maybe safety should, I should say that's primary, but is also to be sure we get the culvert size correctly and make sure that we oversee the culvert, const culvert construction. But I don't know what their requirements are. That would be the is it an issue of shall permit if upon request? It's required. The, oh, you mean are we required to give the permit? I, I, I don't think, I don't think that, I, I think there are some parameters that you have, you as a driveway uh, 
owner uh, have to abide by. So in other words, I think it has to be a certain distance away from the next driveway, and it may have to be a certain width. And they do they they uh, indicate what size the diameter of the culvert, uh, what it has to be. But all of those details, I just don't know. For sure. See, my biggest concern is, and I that you're given on one side of the building, you're given it possibly an unfair economic advantage to someone on the other side of the building, you're not. Um, I'm not going you know, the necessity of the road is, is there. Um, but I've, I've had concerns with the road since the beginning of the conversation. I think I've made some of my points clear on that. And I still have concerns about the road um, and access to the road. just as pointed out, I mean, there's nothing preventing, if we go through with this as written right now, uh, the potential to have two strip malls on either side of that road. And I just don't know that that's the right thing to do for one landowner if we're not doing it for the other, even though the county attorney says a little bit different situations. I just, <coughs> Concerned about that. Yeah, and, and I know we're not necessarily saying that for my benefit. All of what you have said is uh, those are justifiable concerns. Um, but again, this is a five member body for all of you to have your ideas and you all decide as a group what's, what's the best choice. And I, I have not intended to stand in, in the way of that or uh, convolute the matter, but I feel that I have. But I think you just clarified. And many times when we have our audience watching so that they understand what we're doing and we understand what we're doing. So I appreciate uh, you clarifying. My intention was to give you the op options on the table and you all decide what you thought was And I'll tell Corey you did an excellent job. Please do. <laughs> Be happy to hear that I could do something without her color. Color, which is not color. <laughs> I'm going to exchange land value for value with Jim Westmoreland, uh, gain access to Highway 90 uh, without the uh, two foot buffer. And with the 12 months, as you talked about, begin construction, where well, we can begin the construction with it. Okay. I'll second the motion. You said without the two foot button. There's a motion before the court on agenda item number eight by Commissioner Mallett, seconded by Commissioner Dobianski. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Pulse, would you get the revised contract or whatever and we'll proceed with Mr. Westmoreland. I'm going to make the one change that Mr. Mallett suggested and that says begin construction rather than be constructed and I will then circulate that for signature. And remove the two foot barrier. And I will remove the two foot barrier. Thank you all. And also thanks to Mr. Westmoreland for seeing the vision that we have and uh, trying to help us with this project. Absolutely. Okay, we go to agenda number nine, consider and take action regarding the burn ban and authorize the county judge a signatory. My recommendation is we do not put the burn ban up. However, I would say to the viewing public and to the commissioners, if you look at the weather forecast, the weather forecast looks to be a little bit drier over this week and next week. And the humidity is dropping with it going in an early morning temperature tomorrow of, uh, in the mid 60s, which should be comfortable with the lower humidity. But that in turn sets the stage for grass fires and things of that sort. So those of you that do burn, uh, if we do not put a burn ban in place, I would ask you to do it with extreme caution. And if things get out of hand quicker, then our next commissioner's meeting, I would suggest we call an emergency meeting and reinstate the burn ban. 
Any differences of opinion? No. Hearing none, we'll go to agenda item number 10, receipt. So number nine is no action. Agenda item 10, receive an, uh, any updates on the strategic plan? Are there any? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn agenda, agenda item number 11? I move we adjourn. Second. There's a motion before the court by Commissioner Dobianski on agenda item number 11, seconded by Commissioner Walker. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 This meeting, it, it, any opposed? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> this meeting is adjourned.